Makes you feel he's a cool exec with a heart of steel. As Iron Man, all jets of blaze, he's fighting and spite with repulsor rays. Amazing armor, showman's a blazing bomber. You ask in a rocket, you're trying to get out of my face. It's gone. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You have to be qualified, MLB. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now, Albert? Good morning, my good friends. It's your old pal, ML Elric, with a special Bastille Day edition of The Soul of Detroit. For those of you who uh, are new to our fair city, we've been around for over 300 years. And nous étions en ville française. We're a French city. What? You can see the tricolor over my shoulder. And uh, today, I reclaim Detroit for Charlemagne. Oh, okay. Whatever that means. Ah, the French. <laughs> As a special celebration today, we're going to have Mayor Mike Duggan, who is going to be talking about how you can save some money on auto insurance. If you have not been following current events, the mayor made lowering insurance rates for Detroiters one of his top issues when he ran for election. And the legislature, uh, maybe because they were worried about not getting credit, both parties came together and gave us some insurance reform. We're going to talk to the mayor about whether this is really good for you and how you might be able to save some money. I want to tell you, we're going to strictly stick to that topic today because it's a big topic. It's one that has high interest. And if you really want to know what he thinks about other subjects, why don't you follow me in the free press? Because every day when he has a briefing, I ask him just about anything that comes to my mind. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm sure there are going to be some people saying, oh, you're letting the mayor off the hook just talking about insurance. Listen, fellas, I, I, and, 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 and gracious ladies, uh, I got a track record here. I don't lick ass. I kick ass. So if you don't believe that, just follow the briefings. Um, today, we're going to talk about auto insurance. You got a problem with that. Um, come see me. Ooh. Actually, well, that's good because I thought we were talking about yourself. So it's a nice change of pace. <laughs> and there's Sean Windsor it's joining good to, us. It's good to be with you. By the way, is Doug in French? Um, Dujan? Yeah. Yeah, that's you, what I you was never. Thinking. You never heard of Dujon Mustard? It's, uh, God, that's where the guy with high insurance rates pulls up next to you and says, do you have any... Uh, Pardon me. Do you have any gray Dujon, I think it is? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll have the mayor. And of course, Mark Fellhauer is, uh, is holding it down there at the uh, Red Shovel Bunker. And Matt Jennings is just going over his notes before our midterm on soft history. So uh, as long as Joe can keep this thing... On the tracks, we will be joined by the mayor any minute now. Uh, today, we have a special sponsor. It's Manscape. Um, if you don't know what manscaping is, well, then you're probably, you know, when the governor said that you can't go to a, a, a garden shop because they don't want you to tend to your lawn. Well, people were mad. You had a lawn that you could have tended to, and it's, it's about time if you haven't to get with that. Yeah, and stop Support- pretending like you don't do it because we know you people do. Yeah, exactly. And you're getting Still nicks shame. and cuts yeah. and you're walking yeah. around saying, you know, the whole thing before about, you know, oh, you don't want to get caught in your zipper. Now guys are getting caught in their <laughs> razor and it's just as painful and just as embarrassing. So we want to thank Manscaped. They're with us this week and maybe this week only. We're really depending on you to let them know that you care about the show and that when we ask you to support a sponsor that we think is worthy of your support, that you're willing to do it. So we have a promo code ML, which will get you 20% off. Manscaped is bringing you this week's show and this Facebook Live broadcast. They're the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. They offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess (laughs) over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Here's the thing. I know you're using an old razor. I know you're using the same thing you used to cut your hair. Some of you guys may be using a Flowbee. If you're using a Flowbee, you've let this go way too long. It's time (laughs) to weed the garden. Your friends will thank oh, you. Your dog will your, thank yourself you. Yourself will thank yeah. you. Your thighs will thank you. And, uh, <laughs> your partner's and if you face haven't had you. that prostate exam yet, your doctor, doctor will, will thank, thank you, you because when he's trying to poke you in the eye, it's good to know that he's not poking you in the ear. So, uh, so let's clear that up. <laughs> Am I getting punked? No, no, no. This mean? is real. Manscaped. Okay. They sent one for you, Sean. They yeah. took one look at you and said, oh, that guy needs it. Do I look like I'm Manscaped? I don't have any hair. No, that's why they sent one. They need you to Manscaped. Right. They want you to be bald everywhere. 
Yeah, the fact I don't see anything coming out of your T-shirt from your shoulders tell me that you're already maintaining proper uh, proper maintenance. So uh, I did get my ear hair cut recently, <laughs> though, so that was good. Yeah, I, I my kid pulled an ear hair out while I was driving. I almost crashed a car because it hurt so damn much. But the reason she pulled it out is because it it actually was poking her in the ear. So these things, <laughs> gross. There's, I know well, this, it sucks getting old, yeah, but there's lots of applications for this. So, so here's the key thing. If you want to buy one of these and we encourage you to buy one of these, you get 20% off and free shipping with the code ML at manscaped.com. That's M A N S C A P E D.com. You get 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. You see the promo code on our uh, Facebook live feed. Please use it because, uh, don't don't do it for us. Do it for her. Manscape. Okay, or him. great. Anyways, um, you know, I went to the uh, Detroit Will Breathe uh, Tribunal, which was really kind of an airing of the grievances. They should have been calling it uh, Festivus. And I saw the uh, I saw the Columbus Day bust was removed, and uh, that was taken down by the gentleman who's just joined us, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan. Uh, Your Honor, thanks for joining us this morning. Well, thanks for having me on, ML. I think this is my first Detroit area podcast. Well, and hopefully oh. it, it won't be the last. So, uh, I, so I, I want to set the record straight on oh. that because you did come on the the Drew and Mike podcast about twenty when you were running for mayor. We had you on down in the basement of the house. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I drove out to wherever you guys were, in Franklin, that, uh, out in Oakland County somewhere. You got it. Yeah, yeah. So this okay. is number two. And when you went out there, you were probably not too far from Mayor Bing's official residence there in Franklin at the time. <laughs> but, uh, or so I've been told. So, so, I, so I've been told. But uh, uh, we're just closing up a quick little history lesson, Mr. Mayor, before we get to uh, auto insurance. But a- after going by the, the Columbus um, uh, pedestal, I was watching the uh, Detroit Will Breathe folks, and I walked by the Lafayette uh, statue. And since it's Bastille Day, we thought we'd talk about our French heritage for a minute. And uh, Lafayette seemed to be playing it pretty cool, but I swear I saw him looking over his shoulder a couple of times at the Detroit Will Breathe folks, wonder if he's the next statue to go. So maybe uh, maybe we'll we'll make some news before this show is over. But uh, but we, we did we did promise to stick to auto insurance with the mayor. So uh, so okay. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, as someone who has taken the opportunity during this pandemic to uninsure one of my vehicles because we're not driving as much, which means I'm saving, I'm thinking about three grand a year just by taking one car off the road, not including wear and tear, not including savings on gas. Auto insurance rates are a big deal for Detroiters as well as people throughout the state of Michigan. So we're pleased to have the other white mic from the east side on to explain Hmm. to us how we can save some dough on this deal. Uh, well, it's, I, I spent last week and I got my mother switched. I got my brother switched uh, and the savings uh, are enormous. Uh, now, did you switch uh, the, the insurance you do have on the cars you're driving? So I'm about to do that, but I've had a couple insurance uh, conversations with my agent who's an outstanding agent. It's, it's crazy. She lives further from Detroit than any ins- insurance agent I've ever had, but she's gotten me better rates than anybody. So I, I think it's because she's more of a broker than working for one particular insurer right. so she can shop around, which, which folks, they recommend every three years at a minimum you shop around because that's something weird about the rates. It, it's, it's sort of like drug dealers. They give you a good price and then it starts to go up when you realize you got to have it. But she has cautioned me against changing my, uh, my policy because she thinks that, uh, that the, um, some of the lowering, some of my coverage will expose me to uh, some out-of-pocket costs. And she raised an issue that I had not heard before um, because we have two kids here in the house who are both drivers. She said, if they are not domiciled here and they consider themselves residents of East Lansing, that that may be an issue for us getting them covered and I know you've talked about getting that letter from the insurance company that shows, you know, who's from the health insurance company showing who's insured and who lives there. But that whole thing threw me for a loop. And so if nobody else gets anything out of this show, I'm, I'm wondering if you can help me with that. Well, so are your kids under the age of 26 and under your employer health insurance? They are. Yeah. So they're covered. Okay. Whether they're in your house or not in your house, assuming that 
your employer, you've got your letter from your employer that you have a qualified health plan and everybody in your house is covered under it. Uh, you're, you're in good shape. So that just saved me 300 bucks. Mayor Duggan, thanks for being our <laughs> guest today on ML Soul of Detroit. Uh, we'll be right back after a quick break uh, to sell some other junk. But no, well, so, so Mr. Mayor, I, I watched your presentation on Facebook. People can still see this on uh, the City of Detroit's Facebook Live. You can watch the archive video. It's uh, City of Detroit government. Uh, it's quite a long presentation. It's quite detailed, but this is a fairly complicated deal. Can you start us off with some highlights on the easiest ways for people to find out whether there's some savings in this reform for them? Yeah, it, there's nothing about this that's simple. And what I will keep saying is this, the new auto law doesn't reduce rates. If you're going to sit home and wait for your rates to go down, it's not going to happen. What it does is give you choices. And this is the first time in, in you know, more than 40 years we've had choices. So the kinds of choices that people in Ohio and Indiana and Wisconsin are used to making every year, uh, people in Michigan uh, are, are having to understand for the first time. And when you make those choices, I don't care how dedicated your insurance agent is, the great majority of them are working on commission. And if there's a thousand dollars off of your bill, it's a hundred, 150 bucks out of their pockets. Uh, and so what we've heard over and over and over uh, are the efforts that the agents are making uh, to, uh, to slow this down. But uh, I would encourage people to watch the video. I had a lady stop me at dinner the other night with her husband who lives in Detroit. She said they, they called their agent after they watched it. Their agent said, you can't change till next November uh, mm -hmm. when your renewal time is up. She says they rewound it, wrote it down, called the agent back based on my uh, video. The agent admitted that yes, they could. But she told me they called the agent back two or three times after rewinding and watching sections of the tape, ended up saving $3,000. And so this is hard. But I'd say this, if you are on Medicare, it's probably the easiest. So if you are on Medicare and covered on part A and B, uh, you have coverage that in the other 49 states in America, you don't have to buy medical coverage with your car insurance. You can opt out. If you like your Medicare, you can give them a copy of your Medicare card. You can opt out. It'll probably save you $600 or $1,000. If you are not on Medicare, uh, everything is about your health care coverage. Uh, you, the great majority of your bill is called PIP or personal injury protection. And it's about you and your medical care if you get in an accident. And this is what's so strange about Michigan. In the other 49 states, if you've got health care and you get an accident, your health care would take care of your, your emergency room, your surgeries, your rehab, and the like. Now, if you don't think you have good health care, you might want to buy more with your car insurance. Uh, but uh, in, in, uh, in Michigan now, for the first time, you can decide, are you happy with your health care? Does it cover everybody in your house? And if it does... Uh, you may decide you don't need to pay for health insurance a second time. And we should make clear that Medicare is primarily for older uh, folks. That's something that kicks up in once you... Right. So yeah. th that's the easiest one of all. And I don't know what your demographics or your listeners are. It might be their parents or their grandparents. But people 65 and over are switching the fastest from the people that I'm getting letters from because it's the easiest. If you are not, if you're working and you have employer health care, You've got to get the letter from your employer that says that you're covered on car accidents. Because over the years, some companies have taken car accidents off your, your health care coverage because they figured car insurance was going to pay for it anyway. And so you got to make sure that your employer covers you in car accidents. And so your employer will give you a letter if they do. And if your employer doesn't, you should get them to adjust it because it doesn't cost them that much. Um, so... I won't tell you any of this is easy, but it can be worth, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars, depending on uh, on your situation to take the time to understand it. So the individual insurance agents kind of lose out on this because they lose the coverage. You just mentioned that. Who else loses in this new law? Everybody loses uh, except the, the consumer. So think about this. Uh, they're paying a thousand dollars a car to insure a car in Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin paying $2,500 in the suburbs and $4,000 in Detroit. 
everybody in the system is gaining from the amount people in Michigan are being gouged. The hospitals gain, the trial lawyers gain, the insurance agents gain, even the insurance companies at these higher rates uh, gain. And so one of the things that's been frustrating, and I saw the Free Press just did a story on this, uh, that the insurance commissioner is starting to step in, is when July 2nd kicked in, nobody wanted to rush out and encourage you to get the lower rates and choose your options and educate you. That's why I ended up doing that, that presentation. Uh, but I really would have expected the insurance industry and insurance agents to come out and say, here are your options and here's how you can save, let me help you. Just the opposite has happened. They've tried to make this as confusing as possible uh, because they're making money off the higher rates. So uh, I'll, I'll play the role of Mr. Uh, cynical against the government type person. How um, you're out here telling people to do this, is it just out of the kindness of your heart or does city government gain in any way? C- city government gains because people will live in the city. So if it costs you $4,000 to insure your car in Detroit and $2,500 in Ferndale, uh, that is a huge disincentive for Got people it. to live in the city. Or if you live in the city, to honestly report that you live in the city uh, and vote here and pay your, your income taxes Tax. here. Uh, so uh, it, it has absolutely uh, hurt the honest people of the city who have uh, uh, declared themselves city residents. Well, I imagine on some level, once this kicks in, if the rates truly do come down, there is, you know, I always try and play the long game. And I would say to an insurance agent, the long game is you're going to have people who may start to get insurance because they realize they can afford it, as opposed to the people I seem to have the the misfortune to run into all the time who aren't insured, which means the cost of getting my car fixed, well, it's no fault, so it's always on me, but the deductible is now right. on me yeah. if I get... Right get jacked up by somebody who doesn't have insurance. So there's a benefit there too. But just so folks know, this new law took effect on July 1st. And the deal is if you had your policy, which renewed mine renews in mid-May, and you do not take action, you're going to pay those rates. They're on your last bill. But you do have the opportunity to contact your agent, talk it through, find out whether or not you can save some money. In my case, I think I'm going to save couple hundred, maybe 300 bucks on the insurance and maybe a hundred or 150 on, on the PIP. Hmm. That's real money. I'll take it. I can spend it on something else, but it is one of those things where if you're just sitting there waiting for somebody to hand you a winning lottery ticket, you got to at least pick the numbers and you got to go to the bodega and you got to give them a buck. Otherwise you lose it does, when you start it. It does take a lot of work. And, and Mr. Mayor, is there any, um, have you seen any responses to like how many Detroiters are being proactive in this to save money, to switch it over? Every time I'm out, and I'm not out nearly as much as I would like because of COVID, somebody stops me and tells me about how much money they save. But that's anecdotal. At some point, the insurance commissioner is going to release some data. Uh, But I think um, ML's description of this as the long game is right. What's going to happen is in these senior apartments, when the first three or four or five say, I saved $800 or $1,000, here's how you do it, uh, it'll start to spread when your neighbor says, uh, I saved, here's how you did it. When your coworker says, I got the letter from the company, here's how I, I do it. It's almost going to be person to person, people who have succeeded telling others uh, to do it. But I, I would have liked it to have been faster, but it's it it isn't going as fast as it should. So I'm happy to save a few hundred bucks. Um, I'm a quarter Scottish, so I'm happy to save a few cents. So, so I'm glad that we have some reform. But it still feels like what I'm paying for insurance here in Detroit is vastly more that old dudes like me in other states are paying for similar coverage. And I, I have a high deductible, $1,000. Th- this, in many ways... It feels like, why didn't we just start from, why didn't we burn it down? Why didn't we go with the D insurance you were talking about? Why not, why not just say, you know, we're getting out of the game. We're, we're starting a new game and we're setting the rules. I couldn't get the votes. Uh, the reality was I would have loved to have started my own insurance company and done D insurance. Um, but when the outstate legislators, and I got it out of a Senate committee and it was moving, and then the outstate legislators realized they were going to hear from their constituents. Detroiters had lower rates than they had up in Traverse City, and that was going to be a big political issue in their campaign. Uh, and so they wouldn't let us do it. 
Uh, that was just the reality uh, of the, the politics. But ML, you're right. This is going to take some time. Uh, you go everywhere in this town and you see billboards, been in a car accident, call me. Detroiters are solicited to file lawsuits claiming medical claims far more frequently than people in the suburbs. And so the insurance companies are legally allowed to set the higher rates uh, because Detroiters are, are, are filing more medical claims. That's what's driving this. But once we start to knock down the unlimited coverage, now it's not nearly as profitable for the lawyers to file these lawsuits. Uh, and when that happens, uh, we'll see our rates start to move down toward the other states. I think that's going to happen over two, three, four years. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, but it's going to mean a lot of people have to switch out of this unlimited uh, coverage, paying hospitals and doctors whatever they want to bill. And, and that's going to happen over time. Now, I don't want to argue against my own interests, but uh, on behalf of the insurance companies, I will say that almost everybody I know in Detroit has had a car stolen or broken into. Uh, three months after we moved into our place, we made a mistake of leaving the car in the driveway. In the morning, it was gone. Uh, it was later recovered, and um, nobody can do anything about this, but they only took some of my CDs, which was really hurtful that they found some of the music not <laughs> worth stealing. But uh, so I, I'm yeah, trying to uh, get over too. that still, as, as you can tell. But, uh, but can't insurers make a case that, you know, we have a hell of a lot of cars stolen in Detroit. We don't solve a lot of those cases. You report them by phone. So it's really easy to say right. something happened without an, a trusted independent uh, party like a police officer coming out and saying, Boy, it's funny. I, I see that car in the driveway. Why are you telling me it's stolen? So that's true. But comprehensive, if you just look at your bill, comprehensive, it is a small part of your bill. I'm going to say it's 15 or 20 percent. You might have a hundred dollars difference based on car theft. You could have fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars difference based on the medical side. And so you're right. But that's not driving uh, the big differences. And Ultimately, I think there should be a single insurance rate uh, geographically for the entire state. Uh, that's what our ultimate goal is. I think this is a step toward that goal. But car theft is, is maybe affecting you $100 uh, on your car. So if we need to get that proof that our, our health insurance from our employer covers us in case of an accident, is it possible to get that directly from the insurer or do we have to go to the employer? Because I'm, I'm just thinking most of us, we haven't seen our boss in months, which uh, is okay by me. So, so <laughs> if you send an email to your HR department, they'll tell you. Uh, so, again, everything about this is complicated. If you're at a major company in a self-insured plan, you probably get a letter from your company. If you're in a small company and you've got an HMO, you'll get a letter from your insurance company. In Detroit, uh, it's about half and half. So half of Detroiters are getting letters from the city directly, half are getting letters from the insurance company, but I sent something out to every single Detroit employee saying, here's how you do it. And so you should call your boss, if you're in a small business, your HR person, and just say, which is it? But by now, everybody knows. Uh, and so if your employer covers car accidents, they should be able to tell you exactly what you need to do to get your paperwork to prove uh, that your employer covers you. And then you have to make sure everybody in your household has coverage. Because if two out of three of you have coverage, somebody still has to handle that medical bill from your 28-year-old nephew who's living in your house. So, so it, it isn't going to just be you. You're going to have to show that everybody in your house has coverage. That's why we started the show. I asked you whether your kids were under your employer coverage. Yeah, they, they are. But I know um, at one point, one of my daughters was registered to vote in her dorm at Wayne State. And I don't know how that affects things if I need to get her registered back here at the house. Now, we did fill out the census and she's listed as a Detroiter. So we're so, helping so you there. The, here, here, here is your situation. And I think I know you're, you're, you like your agent who got you marginally better rates than other people. But you may want to call somebody else and get a second opinion. But here's the bottom line. If everybody in your house has qualified health coverage, you can opt out. If your daughter has qualified health coverage, it doesn't matter whether she's in Lansing or Detroit, she's not somebody living in your house without coverage. Now, if you bring your niece into your house who doesn't have health coverage, 
Now you lose the right to opt out. But it doesn't matter where your kids go. If they're qualified under your plan, uh, you can opt out no matter where they where they are. Now, where they are may matter for their own individual rates, but it doesn't matter as far as your ability to opt out. I don't know if that was too complicated. Um, I, I got it because I don't have a niece living in my house. So, <laughs> so I, I kind of, I kind of let that one go, but it, it does sound like if you have a regular driver in your home, who's expecting to be covered by your insurance, your auto insurance, if they're not covered by your health insurance, you better stay with what you got because you're leaving yourself vulnerable to a big bill. Yeah. Either they, they either are on yours or they have their own. Okay. So if your if your niece in your house has her own no fault, you're fine. You just can't have somebody in your house who's not covered uh, is a relative. You can't have a relative in your house who's not covered in a car accident. Otherwise, you cannot uh, opt out. But if you can, for most people in this city, the savings is probably upwards of a thousand dollars a car. But if I have some not head cousin living in the basement and they're not insured, but they never drive my car, do I have to? Work- doesn't matter if they live, if your relative lives in your house and doesn't have coverage, you cannot opt out. They could be a passenger in your car. Uh, uh, but so the law says if, if a relative is in your house. Now, if you are living with your girlfriend, which I know is not your situation, who's not related, actually, that person is not a relative. So it is. But if you're living with your mom, your mom is a relative. So every relative living in your house has to have coverage. If you're living with your mom and your mom's on Medicare, you're all set. She's covered. And that's how you actually have to do this. And if you have a good agent, they'll go right down the list with you. Who's living in your house? Are they your relative? Let's see if they have coverage. I wanna so go, my, I wanna... my wife's not listening now, but if I heard you oh, right, the mayor of Detroit said it's okay <laughs> for me to have a girlfriend in my house. <laughs> and you can keep your opt out. She is listening wow. because she, I am going to need health insurance because I'm getting my ass beat. <laughs> She's listening because she commented on Facebook Live to UML specifically oh, no. to let the mayor talk in the very beginning. So we, we know she is listening. She's always listening to you. <laughs> She's probably telling me to shut up. <laughs> I wanted to go Jeez. back to something you said earlier about uh, making like one rate for the whole city. Is that or the whole state? Was that the implication there to kind of end redlining but have a a similar rate for the yeah. whole state. I know they're not your constituents, but the people up north um, should. Why should they be paying a higher rate because more cars get stolen or more accidents happen where the population's denser? Uh, and so that's certainly been the argument uh, is why there's geographic disparity. So right now you could no longer uh, be, in June they could change your rate based on your education. A college graduate could get a lower rate a uh, married person could get a lower rate than a single person. These were things that were allowed uh, even a month ago. And so your question is, well, you know, uh, um, uh, college graduates uh, have fewer claims. Why can't I get a discount? Why should I have to pay a, a higher amount? It's got nothing to do with your driving record. And so what we pushed for, and the governor was very strong on this, if it's not a factor in your driving record, it shouldn't be on your rate. Now, uh, if younger people have higher uh, experience than older people, you could say, all right, uh, I could understand that. People who have had accidents and tickets are higher. I can understand that. Um, and so I think there should be a universal base rate that's only modified based on your own driving record. That's my view. But as you point out, that's not a view we've ever been able to get through Lansing. Well, in addition to some of the opposition that you you had to your insurance plan, there was actually quite a bit of opposition from Detroit lawmakers. I remember a certain individual with a, a rather colorful past named Brian Banks, who was leading a charge from Detroit lawmakers who said, you know, we're going to get second rate insurance here. So it seems to me that one of the challenges we have to get any comprehensive reform or to take this to the next level with, with future legislation is we got to get some folks here in the hometown on board too, because it's tough to pull a whole state along when you got guys in your own neighborhood dragging you back. Well, we, and we did. And that was what was so important about the 2018 election. Ryan Banks lost uh, to Senator Adam Ollier on exactly that issue. And a couple others lost. Fred Durhall lost to Marshall Bullock over uh, that issue. But in this last bill, all five Detroit senators, and seven out of 10 Detroit reps supported this. 
But you're absolutely right. It was very disappointing. Um, and I think we had some Detroiters who realized you can get a lot more money from some of these donors voting against your constituents than you can voting for them. Uh, but you, you remember the thanks Lansing campaigns that ran across this state in 2018. But t- this time it was the Detroit delegation. It was Marshall Bullock and Adam Ollier and uh, Karen Whitsett and Sylvia Santana. A lot of Detroiters, Wendell Bird led the charge on this legislation. And I think the flipping of the Detroit delegation last year uh, was the single biggest factor, along with electing Governor Whitmer and getting this done. I find it impossible to believe, and I want to go on the record as saying that no one will ever convince me that Brian Banks only did something that was in his own interest. <laughs> By the way, he doesn't live in Detroit. He lives in Gross Point now. He right. really wants to live in Detroit, but he wants to be a big Detroit guy. But that's that's okay. That's another show. Um, <laughs> we, we have just a minute or two left, uh, Your Honor, and we appreciate you taking the time. Um, if I'm looking at my insurance bill and I'm saying to myself, uh, I'm still confused, but is there one or two things I should look at and ask my agent about? What lines are you telling me? It sounds like if I'm a young guy, I don't need to worry about Medicare. I probably want to ask somebody about PIP. What's the other thing? There's, there are two things. One is if you have good health coverage that you're confident in in your life, does it qualify to get you to opt out of PIP? And second, even if it doesn't, do you want to really buy unlimited PIP, which no other state does, or do you want to buy medical coverage for 250000 which is the vast majority of claims? That would probably save you $300 and $400 uh, if you just went down to the level of coverage, uh, really, of any other state. Uh, but those are choices. I would say one thing is call two or three different people, even if you've been with one agent for years call two or three other people and have a conversation uh, and, and listen to each of them because this is complicated. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, unless there's anything else you'd like to add or if, if you want us to drag you on a whole bunch of other topics, I think we <laughs> probably need to let you go. But um, normally guests on our show get a 12-pack of Altus, the Droid original lager that's one of our sponsors. I've heard that you don't really drink, and I know you are very pro-mask, so I, I got you a sponsor. Oh, gross. Yeah, so. <laughs> If um, <laughs> uh, uh, send it to me and I'll uh, uh, it, it, throw it in the garbage. When I when I when I visit the new Michigan State uh, uh, Medical School campus that they're looking to put here, I will use that. Okay, good. Well, I'll, I'll hold on to it for now, but it sounds right. like that's a, a definite maybe. All right. Okay, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan, thank you very much for joining us. You can see his presentation in great detail with some graphics and some illustrations. That if you're having trouble grasping this. He does a really good job of walking you through it. Uh, One good thing about being a a nerdy Michigan guy is uh, he's really big on detail. And if you have some more (laughs) questions, you can find that presentation on the city's Facebook Live. And we'll try and add a link to that at uh, at our our website, which is mlsoulofdetroit.com. And it's not just a city thing. It's a state thing, too. So if you don't live in the city, it's worth checking on. All guests of Harry got ML Solo Detroit receive a 12 pack of Altus Lager. Oh, he loved beer. So let me tell you about Altus Lager. It really is making a comeback here in the greatest, if the most expensively insured city in the world. It's the do anything, anytime with anyone beer, and I'm back on the ice. And so is the Altus. Every time I go out to skate, I look forward to a cold Altus afterward. Fun fact it only takes six Altus to make anyone a 10. We have lots of things that started in Detroit that went away, but I'm glad Altus is back. You can find it on tap uh, if they let us run the taps, but you don't have to worry about where the bars are open. It's in stores all over the place. Go to altus.beer. That's A-L-T-E-S dot B-E-E-R. They have a store finder there, and you're going to be surprised at how many locations have it. If a store near you doesn't have it, let Altus know or let us know, and we'll tell them to get right. If not, uh, get some. Enjoy some. And as you're sitting there with your hands stuffed inside your belt, enjoying an Altus, think of us in the backyard wishing we were there together. <laughs> okay, that got a little creepy. <laughs> it just, well, anyways, um, big news yesterday. Uh, Manuel Maddie Maroon passed away uh, at the age of 93. And there were, uh, there were plenty of things written about him. We wrote about him at the Free Press 
We also have a, an audio story about him that I think you can find on your Alexa uh, in-house betrayer spy machine. But um, but I had a couple personal encounters with the Maroon family that that I think are worth sharing because the company has now gone into the hands of Matthew Maroon, who's Maddie's son, who was born rather late in Maddie's life and who is very, very different in demeanor and temperament from his dad. His dad was kind of a no holds barred, um, very much a uh, bottom line guy. I mean, he spent millions, tens of millions of dollars trying to block the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project, making donations to lawmakers. And I think there's a lot of people who say, why would you spend 20 to $30 million on an issue that you know is going to fail? Mm -hmm. But, and I haven't had the chance to ask Maddie this, and now I won't get that chance. But knowing a little bit about him, I think he always figured if I spend a million dollars to slow down this project, but every day I slow it down, I make $2 million. Yeah. That's a million dollar profit. I mean, he was he was that shrewd. And do, back do you think, when, do you think that continues with uh, with Matthew with his son? I don't think so because there was some controversy where the city of Detroit had a, a Riverside Park that basically mm -hmm. the bridge company or one of one of the maroon companies had sort of appropriated. They were putting their construction stuff on there. They had fenced it off because it was near one of the one of the staging sites for their bridge that they wanted to build. In fact, these guys were so ballsy. They started to build the on-ramp to the bridge <laughs> until the government said, you don't have permission to do that. And then they fought them and then they ended up having to tear it down. But it was kind of one of those things like, oh, you guys want to build a bridge? Okay, you keep going through the process. We're just going to start building I'm a bridge. Doing it, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, after there was some work done on this and the uh, the Maroons agreed to swap some land that the city wanted to expand and improve the park. And I think they threw some money in too. And in return, the city gave the Maroons some land that was considered not very valuable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Mayor Duggan supported that deal. I'm still not sure that was a great deal for the city. There's some some twists and turns in there that are worth tracking down. But when Matt Maroon... Matthew Maroon, the son, came to City Hall to speak to City Council and to the public about it. He acknowledged that this was a good deal, but he understood why people wouldn't see it that way because there is hatred for that family in Southwest Detroit because they bought so much land. They didn't take care of it. Trucks drove through those streets spewing diesel fumes and sulfur and rocks and everything you can imagine. And, uh, and I asked Matthew, who I knew a little bit because we coached against each other when our kids were playing hockey. And, and I said, you know, what do you think it's going to take? And he's like, it's going to take time. And I said, do you think it's because, you know, the way your family's conducted itself in the city? And he said, that's, that's what I'm referring to. So, oh, I mean, wow. there's, there's an acknowledgement there. And I think those windows that went up in the Michigan Central Depot that are now going to be removed <laughs> because they weren't, you know, the ideal windows. Yeah. But I think the only reason they put some of that money in there to try and improve the appearance of that building was because Matthew Maroon said, we've got to do something to show people that we're not just leeches. And, uh, yeah. and there were times in the early 2000s when city council said, fix that building or we're going to tear it down. Like a lot of threats from city council, it was a bit of an empty threat. But, you know, Maddie would just put together plans to turn it into an international trade hub and we're going to do all mm. this other stuff. And they'd draw up all these renderings and drop them off at city council. And it looked like they were going to do something. But they didn't do anything. It was all about tap dancing yeah. for time. Wasting so. time. Wasn't Maddie one of the first to uh, deunionize uh, his trucking company? Wasn't he one of the first to pull out a Teamsters? I'm not sure, but if there's anybody out there who's tougher than the Teamsters, it would have been Maddie Maroon. And I'm sure having to give anybody anything he didn't feel like giving them would not have sat very well with him. The man was sued by his sisters. But uh, Jim and I had a story back in, oh, God, it would have been around 2005, where the city had agreed to sell some land, some useless land, mm -hmm behind the train station to a group that wanted to build rail tunnels. They want to convert rail tunnels between Windsor and Detroit. 
so that trucks could drive through there and thereby increase traffic between American Canada, probably make us a little more prosperous because it would give us some redundancy with those, those precious international travel arteries and with the just-in-time warehousing where, which I know sounds kind of, what's he talking about? Basically, at one time, if you needed parts, there was a shelf full of parts. Now, the way most companies work, if you need a part, you call somebody and a day later, they bring it to you. It was sort of Amazon before Amazon. Yeah. When 9-11 hit and they couldn't go over the bridge and the tunnel was pretty much locked down, the economy ground to a halt. So there were people who said, let's build some more ways to get goods from Canada to the United States. It's good for America. It's good for Detroit. And Maddie's like, you know, I got a bridge. I'm not really interested in more ways to get here. You come through my bridge, you kiss mm-hmm. my ass. And so everybody in the city decided it was a good idea to sell this useless land behind the depot to, um, to the people who wanted to use it to build these, these extra passages between Detroit and Windsor. And then Mayor Kilpatrick at the last minute canceled the deal because the Maroons didn't like it. Yeah. So I don't think that's well, a coincidence. It, and we, we also discovered at that, that, that time, due to some great reporting by Patty Montemurray, that the Maroons and Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick had set up a political fund that was basically stocked with money from Maddie Maroon. Maroon's companies and or political entities and Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick's political entities where they just socked tens of thousands of dollars away in this account and the money was distributed. It was supposed to be a political account but the money was distributed for things like graduation gifts to huh. Cheeks Kilpatrick family members, wedding gifts. You know, it was just, I mean, this dude, he was, uh, he was a character like we won't see for a long time. And folks probably remember when Kilpatrick skedaddled. Yeah. Whereas all the other CEOs made these $60,000 loans yep. to the Kilpatrick family. Yeah, and Maroon just said, Here's a fifty thousand dollar check. I don't need to play games. Yeah. I like you. Here's fifty grand. And, and Kiss my ass, and America. And that's why there's the perception of that family in there. And I, you know, I, I would hope Maddie or Matthew, who's now in charge, can start to rebuild that. And maybe uh, he seems to understand that deeds are going to mean a lot more than words at this point. They sure. always should, but particularly given the the toxic legacy, both in terms of toxic stuff being spewed in the air and just and just. Uh, just the way people get along that um, that he's got some work ahead of him. So you may have some work ahead of you trying to become a billionaire. How do I do that? uh, You know, you may want to call Luke Nowacki. Well, some people like to save up for something really nice, (laughs) like a new earring that looks cool. Uh, Yeah. If you're wondering how you can budget for a major purchase, call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748 or email at L Nowacki, that's L N O W A C K I at Pinnacle Wealth Strategies.com. He can assist you to devise a plan targeted to help you reach your financial goals. And he'll to- tell you it's not all about you, sweetheart. Securities and investment advisory services right? offered through Royal Alliance Associates Inc. Member FINRASIPC. Royal Alliance Associates Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates Inc. I believe he will make it all about you, sweetheart. I just want to see you if will. you were. As long I just as want you to see if you were listening. Well, I'm always listening. Okay, good. No matter what good. you say, right, it's Sean? All... Yeah, I'm always listening. <laughs> <laughs> wow, damn. Okay, well, Sean, don't make me put the Soul of Detroit curse on you because I think uh, it's time for a little update on the way the things the world work out there. Um, you may remember. Uh, many, many shows ago, and you can find all of our episodes wherever you get quality podcasts or at our website, mlsoulofdetroit.com, that we encouraged Joe Biden to discuss the allegations of sexual assault. And within days, he was on national media reluctantly talking about it. Reluctantly, and it was a friendly, very friendly MSNBC audience. Yeah, so, pretty uh, softballish. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty weak. But he did get out there. In fact, within hours of us telling Governor Whitmer that she really screwed up with that whole is my husband trying to get a favor to get my yeah, boat on the water thing. Right. She copped to it. Mm. Kind of. Yeah. The, the joke that fell flat. Well, we said she addressed the issue. Yeah. She, I we, guess we, the we, right way to say it. we encourage her to address it. Yeah. We said, stop saying this is just a rumor. We don't address rumors. And they did whether the address was satisfactory or not. We'll leave to you. Good people. Uh, many episodes 
ago, we said that some of the Fox Evening News commentators had blood on their hands for the way they or would have blood on their hands for the way they've been handling the coronavirus outbreak. Well, Florida, the state they talked so uh, glowingly about, now is setting new records, national records, surpassing New York City in terms of COVID-19 cases. So I'm going to check that one out as more premonition and that we were right. Uh, saying you got to wear masks. Now the president himself is wearing a mask, a very fetching mask with a nice little presidential logo on it. And of course, the Redskins nickname or the nickname of the professional football club from yeah. Washington is on its way out. Dunzo. The funny, so, the funny thing about that to me, though, is that they're not doing it for any other reason other than that they lost some advertising money. It's all about money. It's not that they see it as maybe being the right thing to do. From our lips to uh, the powerful's ears. That's, uh, you want to bring about real change, put it on our radar, folks. I think, real quickly, Mark, I, yes. it's not about money. I mean, it is about money it's from about the money. sponsors, but that's not what started it. What started it was George Floyd and the protest. So, in other words, the atmosphere, the climate had to be there. Then the corporations so, see that climate, react to it, and pressure Daniel Snyder. Yeah, but Sean, so that, that the can't... money is why he changed it. But money is not why uh, those companies change necessarily. They read the tea leaves of the change in society and said, all right, we're going to take a stand here. And do yeah, this. but don't you think that their uh, decision to maybe apply that financial pressure is because they didn't want to get crap from a mob or from uh, bad press for supporting a team with a, you know, racial slur as a nickname? I mean, what's, I, the, what's their I mean, how much money, how much is Nike going to... The amount of money, I mean, I know it's a lot for the Redskins, excuse me, to watch the NFL team there, but uh, but how much is it overall for Nike or for Walmart, right? They they yeah. pulled it. I mean, that was really big. Yeah. And, but, I, I mean, are Walmart's uh, customers really going to be up on arms over that outside of the Washington, D.C. area? No, but it's another headache that maybe they don't want to deal with. I, I just, right. I find it but, though, but none of that changes it without people taking to the streets and having the national conversation we're having. So yes, Except money this conversation, is absolutely a part of it. This but. conversation's been going on for damn near thirty-five years. Yeah, and and if you if you had ten people walking in the street, I don't think FedEx would worry what they exactly. Think. I mean, exactly. the people walking, but the, but the way FedEx is looking at the people in the street is dollar signs. If those people in the street use UPS instead of FedEx because FedEx's name is on what used to be Jack. Co- Kent Cook Stadium, or maybe they're not playing there anymore. I mean, I think it all comes down to money, and I'd like to believe that our major corporations have social consciences, but I only think they respond to pressure, and I think they worry about losing money. So, Papa, Papa High School voted yeah. three years ago. They were the Redskins, right? Yeah. And Papa Michigan. They voted to keep it three years ago. They changed it in March before George Floyd, before it happened. It had nothing to do with money. There sometimes it's just societal changes. The language changes. It's not always money. I understand Daniel Snyder didn't want to lose money. I wrote a column about this today, and I've had people emailing me telling me that it, um, that he was going to change it. It had nothing to do with money, which, of course, is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. he was he was facing losing hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. The FedEx alone was about $45 million. Sure. And, and like I, that. I applaud the people in Paw Paw, but you have to be careful with the new nickname because the Paw Paw Foreskins was a bad idea. No, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I won't change my mind on anything, regardless of the facts that are set out before me. I'm dug in, and I'll never change. Very nerd, very so, very nerd, very so, very nerd infinity, very so infinity plus one. No. This is a great debate, folks, but there's no debate that the butchery is the place to go for prime meats. I go there because they have the best quality USDA prime and all grass-fed beef and all their pork is 100% Michigan raised. Plus it's convenient. You can get your meat in any portions you want, everything from a single steak to half a cow. Everything Chef Dave puts out is made in house, like their high-end sausage and brats and even his wife's delicious homemade desserts. They are really, really good. All this month, uh, tell Chef Dave and the staff there that you were sent there by ML. And if you buy 50 bucks worth of stuff, they will throw in a free pound of bacon. The butcher on Orchard Lake Road is easy to find. Just take Telegraph to Orchard Lake Road and head west. I promise you it's worth the drive. Call 248-682-COWS or visit their website, thebutcherysl.com. The best place for prime meats, eats, and treats.
Um, uh, we're going to sink our teeth into something meaty now, too, which is the school debate. The president. Wait, we just had a debate, didn't we? <laughs> oh, you want to keep going with that? Okay. No, 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 no. You do what you want. It's your show. I'm just, this is what we just had a debate. By the way, Mark, did you notice we set a record today? What? He didn't mention Kilpatrick until, I think, 46 <laughs> minutes into the show. And, I was impressed. And, and so much reluctancy in doing so. I know. And it, it was sort of buried inside, uh, you know, like white bread uh that's why i didn't know the maroon in the maroon anecdote which lasted an hour but that was <laughs> that was um I, I was impressed that he held off on it for that long i was really impressed well anyway, done it, it took carry it took, on it took every ounce of restraint for me not to ask the mayor if he's having any parties at the menu again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just like the last mayor so uh, <laughs> so we, we did maintain some decorum here on the uh on the old sod but um, this debate really is an extension of the last debate because this issue of whether we're going to open the schools or not really is all about money. And it's about whether keeping kids at home is going to hurt the economy. I mean, people are saying it's going to hurt kids' development. I really think there is a lot to that. But I think the reason the president is pushing this is because he feels if we can get back to, quote, unquote, normal, if we can get kids back in the schools, we can get people back to work, and we can kind of create this sense that we are in a pre-COVID uh, environment. And I think the question is, is it smart to bring kids back into schools right now? And, and uh, is it safe? Maybe that's the same question. Sean, go ahead. I, I don't know. <laughs> he's going back know. into stasis. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know the, uh, I just don't know the answer to that. I, I, I wouldn't want to not um, include public health opinion, public health experts opinion. And doctors and scientists. And that's what I worry about a little bit. But that's starting to get shoved aside a little bit too much. I mean, you know, the White House is going after Fauci right now, which is. We, your boys are college age. If they were due to go to high school or even middle school, would you send them in, in September? Um, you mean if the state or the district was telling me that they had to go? As we are right now, if they said you got to go. No. Okay. You wouldn't. No, it's just. It, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to risk the teachers either, right? I mean, my, my kids, if they got it, they'd be fine, more, more than likely. It almost sounds like you have a lack of trust in uh, the decision-making. I would. You know what? In this state, actually, I don't. I, I, I would trust it to some degree. I mean, because of, because of what's happened here with the curb and the numbers and everything else, we've done a, a, a decent job, especially considering where we were. Then why wouldn't you send them then? Right now, if the school's... You mean, right, you mean yeah. right now? Yeah, say we have a plan and it's safe. Send your kids in, and you said you wouldn't. I just I'm curious as to why. right because the f people get together at Harper's and they and they cont and they contract it right. I mean, anytime anybody's sure. getting together without mass or social distancing, they're getting it right. I mean, it's spreading. So does it does that make a lot of sense? Well, when you say know. when you say schools, um, I, I guess we're really talking. Are we talking about high schools? Are we talking about elementary? No, no we're talking about high schools and elementary schools. But it's not like universities that can spread it out online to some degree. Spread out, you know. They're going to have fewer people on, or students on campus anyway. But that's not the case with uh, elementary and high school, right, with secondary. You don't think, and I agree with you, ML, the whole idea of, um, you know, the psychological effects. Of course, it's better to be in school. I, I do think sometimes it's maybe overstated as kind of a fear factor. Like, well, if they're not in school, they're not going to learn. But, you know, the trade-off is if they're in school and everything's really shut down or closed down and masked, I mean, that has an adverse psychological effect. I, I think, but that being said, I, there's there's got to be a way to re. When businesses are reopening to an extent, why can't a school reopen with safety measures? Whenever I get a chance to go into De a Detroit public school, I do, and and even in the newer buildings, and there are a lot of newer buildings. What you find is those classes are pretty tightly packed. There's a exactly. lot of students per teacher, and so the idea that you can socially distance kids and move them out. That seems to me physically impossible. The other thing is um, when you have that many kids, you know, so, so when I was coaching hockey, we had to get certified. And one of the things that they, they taught us in the class, which is one of, the, one of the truest things I've ever seen, is there's different ways that kids learn. Sometimes kids learn because you give them instructions. And they can read the instructions and do it. Those are your engineers. Then there's people who need to have it demonstrated for you where, you know, if you're doing a drill or you're doing a math problem, you have to show them how you work through it. 
And then there's the other kids who actually have to get out on the ice and sort of flop around and say, okay, no, go left, go right, inside mm-hmm. edges, outside edges, all that other stuff. Or they have to get up there with the chalk on the board. I guess we don't use those anymore, but, and actually work it out. It's going to be impossible if you can't get close to kids to teach all those kids in the way they need to be taught. And, 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 and frankly, I think the real issue is we have a lot of older teachers. They're just not going to go. Well, that's the They're problem. They're just going to say, you know, I retire. Well, you if, know. if they do get, if they do go and they get sick, they're not going to be out two weeks. They could easily be out two, three months. And then, Permanently. and then what do you do? Um, but there's got to be a way to, there's got to be a way to do it. I just, I don't like the answer of just saying no school. We're doing it all online because now you put a lot of people at a choice of what do I do with my kids? I got to go to work. Do that's just- the biggest issue, Mark, right? Yeah. Can we just be honest and say that's what we're really talking about? Yeah, it's about because the, the kids, the kids will be fine. Kids that are homeschooled are fine by and large, right? I mean, if, if yeah. we said, let's take a whole break. America with schooling for a year. Everybody would be fine in terms of the learning process and the development of the kids. They'd be just fine. The, yeah. What you're talking about is the much bigger issue. Yeah, it's, a, it's, how, it's do, about the, how do you work? How do you work? It's about the adults, parent. the adults that would be in the school and exactly. the parents exactly. that don't can't stay home to take care of them. Exactly. That's it. I, that may I, I you know, I don't know if I buy that because I how how much do we worry about kids who are online all the time now who don't interact with each other where it's all I'm posting on social media, I'm liking this, I'm not liking that, I'm trolling people. I think Face to face is incredibly important for kids, mm-hmm. and and I you know I got no problem with homeschooling if you have a good program and all that other stuff, but even the homeschooling families want to make sure that they can have their kids involved in extracurriculars that they can. How do your kids of- survive summer? You telling me they can't survive nine more months of that? Well, they As a seven year old can get through summer without stunting his development just fine. You're telling me they yeah. can't have nine nine more months of that? I mean, we we got through ten thousand years without public schools. We'll be fine. It's, it's the economy, and Mark's right. It's the economy and the parents. If you can't work, the whole thing starts to come crashing down, right? I mean, that's, that's what's scary. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's – but I do – so I, I, I'll just tell you right now, I just don't think the schools are going to be ready. I don't think they have the facilities. I don't think they have the staff. I don't think they have the, uh, the money to do what they need to do. I mean, these schools – a lot of them look like crap on the best of days. Now you're going to say we're going to wipe them down every day. You know, they're wiping them down every night. Now you're going to, I mean, it just doesn't seem realistic to me, but I do think that it's very important that we find a way for kids to get together. And if there's a way that they can safely get them in the school, they should. But I will say this, what's going to be the most annoying thing over the next couple of months is how political this whole thing will turn. And we already see it starting. It already happen. is. Yeah, too late. So it's going to be not necessarily about the kids or the adults. It's going to be about the politics behind it, which will be the most annoying aspect of it. I wish they would be more like Luke Nowacki and make it all about you, sweetheart. Oh, man, the geeks have inherited the earth. <laughs> Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek? Or we're turning into cool guys. I think sweetheart should be the cue for all uh, all intros, right? Luke, I'm good. I'm doing my best to make it up to your brother. <laughs> I did I'm going you back wrong. to hypersleep, by the way. <laughs> okay, so uh, j- uh, just um, we'll wake up Sean when it's safe. I don't know when the hell that's going to be. 2022. Um, I'll be next to Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> so m- nice. maybe you're teaching your kids in your tiny ass house, and you're losing your mind. Maybe it's time for a bigger house. And if you're thinking that way. I got somebody you should call. That's Lindsay Broadwell. When it's time to move in a new house, whether you're buying, selling, or both, you need to contact Lindsay Broadwell. (laughs) Lindsay Broadwell. LB to friends. Your house is one of your most valuable assets, and that's why you need an agent you can trust and that knows the business inside and out. Buyers, sellers, especially first-time buyers, make sure you contact Lindsay Broadwell at broadwellhomes.com or 248-767-7767. She's a licensed realtor at Remax Nexus. That's broadwellhomes.com, 248-767-7767. And if you call LB, tell her ML sent you. And now, Geek of the Week. We, I got to tell you, we had so many potential <laughs> candidates that I, I narrowed it down to two. Oh, because wow, okay. it was one of those things where to do justice to all of them, we'd be here for hours and hours. So I just, I picked two great ones. And one group or one one. One of our finalists is a, a group of about 100 employees at Ford Motor Company who are asking the automaker to, to reconsider where they should build police vehicles 
in light of the controversies surrounding the George Floyd death, police brutality, and social mm-hmm. justice. Listen, we all want to see America in a better place, but not building cop cars that are safe both for cops and for people who are detained doesn't make sense. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, quality is job one. Let's focus on job one. D- don't worry about and, and by the way, they are making some pretty sweet police cruisers over there at Ford. Those Explorer SUVs are all over yeah. the place. But our winner You've seen a lot of them, is, huh? What's that? You've seen a lot of them, huh? I've seen people jumping on a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, luckily, it's been a while since I've been inside one. <laughs> but, um, and it was always just as a, as a reporter. So my, uh, my delinquency usually involved the police telling me to drive my car to the police station. It was never so bad <laughs> that they thought I would. Anyways, there's a couple of stories there. We'll do another time. Um, sure otherwise, oh, I, I knew it. I knew he was waiting. I knew he was just, he's crouched. He's poised like a, like a, like a, like a coiled, like a coiled um, uh, chia pet. Um, you're, you're not anyways, helping yourself. Our, our winner is brought to us by Matt Bonesteel of the Washington Post, who, by the way, has the best byline in sports. He reports that Novo Djokovic, or Jokovic, yeah. says he is being unfairly targeted for organizing an unsanctioned tennis tournament last month in Europe, one in which he, his wife, his fitness coach, three other tournament players, and another player's trainer tested positive for the Novel coronavirus. You may know it as COVID-19, the invisible enemy, the silent killer. Uh, Mr. Djokovic, who is the world's top Rated tennis player says, I can only see criticism lately, and much of it is malicious. It's obviously more than just criticism, like an agenda and a witch hunt are on. Why is it that people who it's deny the danger hunt. of the coronavirus keep using this term witch hunt? Is yeah. there is there like is there a script that's being circulated? <laughs> he's an anti vaxxer type, if I'm he, not mistaken. He, you're correct. He is an anti vaccine. Yeah. He's, so anyways, he's a great player, but mm. Yeah, but uh, 911 is a Djokovic. He says basic safety, or no, I shouldn't say he says it. We know that basic safety protocols that were established during the pandemic were not followed at the tournament. Uh, Players answered questions in close quarters at news conferences, and neither the, the players nor the reporters were wearing masks. On the court, players shook hands and draped arms over one another after matches, and they were spotted partying shirtless. Ew. At nightclubs, which sounds pretty cool, except I think this was a men's turn- tennis tournament. <laughs> so here's what Djokovic says. Someone has to take the fall, a big name to be the main culprit for everything. I leave it to others to say if that is fair. I don't think it is. I think what we must learn from all this is to adapt as we go along. You, He what, needs to learn that. Stop telling yeah, us what we need to learn. I mean, so early on, people might have said you don't need to wear, but they did say elbow bumps. Okay, Novo. So, so you need or Novak, you need to learn that <laughs> stuff. But here's the coup de grace. He says he's now debating whether to participate in the U.S. Open next month, and you're going to love his reason. Oh boy! The upsurge in registered COVID-19 cases in the United States and New York, in particular, are not playing into the event's hands. He says. So, Novo Djokovic. We don't love you. Here comes a hot one across the net. You're our Geek of the Week. The kids are soft. I don't care for that guy. Me neither. Too no. soft. I'm going to pretend like you need to just make my dick go soft. Some things are tough. Soft. Some things are hard. And when times are hard, you might want to save a little money with our soft Week in History sponsor, David Hall. They care about the community, and that's why they want to try and save you some money. They're back to work while you're at home trying to get things done, and they want you to think about it. Take a break from your uh, your uh, your working for the boss, from your own home office, which you're not being paid for by with utilities or anything. Anyways, I, I don't want to get into that. Uh, they just want you to refinance your place because they know you can save some money. You can probably save up to two payments if you refinance now. The rates are going through the floor. They're as low as they've ever been. And you get to keep some extra money when you refinance, not just because of the missed payments, but when you have a lower rate, that means lower payments every single month. If you're worried about the coronavirus, that's fair, but don't worry about finances. There's a guy who can save you money. That's David Hall. Their service is the fastest in the business. That's why they have so many five-star reviews, over 1,500. Go to our webpage and click on the logo to get started or call 248-308-5000. Hall Financial, lower payments, better options, more personal attention. Make sure you tell them ML sent you 
NMLS 1467435. Thus endeth that lesson. And now it's time to go through the hallways. Don't slam lockers. Don't put me in a locker because people tried to do that and they didn't appreciate it. And now it's history class with, uh, with uh, Ray Walston. Who the hell is that? Sorry, oh. it's a uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, High reference. Yeah. Oh, thank so, you. Mr. Mr. Hand. I do know a lot more and more people using Hall Financial, like just running into people saying it. Did you ever get the feeling Matt's cutting some side deals with these I sponsors? I kind of do, I know. I'm I wondering know. about this. He just shaved a point off his refi. <laughs> well done, son. Uh, okay, history folks. In 1980, Ronald Reagan was nominated to run for president of the Republican Party at a staggering 97.4% during a visit to the Renaissance Center in Detroit. That same day, George H.W. Bush was officially nominated as, as his running mate. But what people might not know, and I didn't know that, you guys might, but uh, at, that, at that time, Reagan was actually hoping that Gerald Ford would be his running mate. Really? Did you, did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, is this a he setup? actually, no, no, this oh, okay. is for real. I was doing, doing <laughs> you know, minutes of research on the subject okay. and it turns out he wanted to, um, and actually he called him to talk about it. But unfortunately during the phone call, Ford tripped on the rug and fell down three <laughs> flights of stairs. I did not know that. He, he had yeah. to console himself with some nachos with Homer Simpson. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Efforts. SNL has such a huge impact on my life, it seems, because when anybody says anything about Gerald Ford, I don't picture President Ford. I picture Chevy Chase falling off a ladder. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, it's, I that's, mean, that's really <laughs> his big iconic moment from uh, SNL. Next, the 1982 <laughs> creep show based on novellas by Stephen King was released to a limited audience for a sneak peek in Detroit. Since then, creep show has become a a cult horror classic featuring the ghoulish but silent staple character known as the creep who had appeared in that film as well as a sequel part three in some comic books and can most recently be seen as mayor of warren wow yeah it's a, a fouts you first they cut his assistant now you're cutting deep <laughs> Okay, let's have the next one. Uh, Detroit Free Press did a story in 2008 about police officers in Flint handing out tickets for people wearing their pants too low. Oh, that was a thing. You know, I remember that. I that remember that. Thing. Ben Schmidt yeah. wrote that, I think. He sure did. Uh, the article started with the sentence, Flint residents now have to watch their butts because the chief is on the lookout. And I could tell that Schmidt had a good sense of humor because the chief who warned the residents of Flint to watch their butts was named Chief Dix. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a new drop. I love it. Wow. So what kind of lesson did we learn today, guys? Mayor Fouts, yeah, maybe he might be a bad guy. The Flint chief might have went too far. Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon. People are mad about that. But one thing we can do is if we can't get along, we can at least laugh. There you go. The uh, guest in, in room 7609 this week uh, comes to us with the answer to the question, what happens when you put four knuckleheads on a podcast? And so here's Ultravox with a fine tune that they call Root the Wild. Yeah. 
Take my hand and give me your friendship. Will you take your time and send me your slow reply? Will you give me an inch and I'll make the best of it? Will you take all you want and leave all the rest to die? Because if so, then together we can reap the wild wind. <laughs> I love the inch part. I think Sean checked out. Or he just muted That was a himself. microaggression. It's what? Sh- Sean is the footprint that haunts an empty floor. He's the fading coat that I once wore. He's the desolation where I once lived. No? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's, that, that's Ultravox, one of, the, uh, one of the first punk bands to become synthesized and really uh, pioneer the use of synthesizers in new wave music. They were not particularly successful as a punk band, but they found their footing once uh, they changed lead singers to Midge Ure, who we heard before when he was From with where? Visage, oh, which really? was Fade to Grey. But uh, Midge Ure, as we mentioned back then, also co-wrote and produced Do They Know It's Christmas, Ugh. which we've already talked about. But the reason I bring it up again, because it allows me to sneak in a Smith's reference, and I'll do that every chance I get. And when... When Morrissey was asked about do they know it's Christmas, he had one of the greatest, greatest put-downs of all times. He said, one can have great concern for the people of Ethiopia, but it's another thing to inflict daily torture on the people of Great Britain because he, <laughs> yeah. he hated the song. It was a bad, bad song. So much. Horrible. But uh, there's, there's one for the Maz. I've never heard of Ultravox. I like that song, though. It was cool. It's well, a really short song for a uh, for a new wave song. Usually, they drone on for about another five minutes. Yeah, well, they kind <laughs> of yes, they kind of. Uh, well, when you think of how many how many times they have the same chorus, it really didn't need to yeah. be any longer. I think three of the three of the verses are the same. So, I mean, in in, in essence, there's not a lot going on there. But the the biggest hits from Ultravox were Vienna, which is just a dirge. It's 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 miserable to listen to. But the other reason to talk about Ultravox and Reap the Wild Wind because this album was produced by someone who is beloved by the impresario behind the Red Shovel Network. Who was, uh, I'm trying to think of who would have produced it. Um, uh, Elvis you, Costello? Uh, am I that's going, not a bad guess. Am I going in the right direction? It's the last it guy Lynn? you'd ever think to produce Lynn? a Je- new wave album. Say Jeff Lynn, Paul McCartney. Oh, getting closer. Really? Ooh. George? John Lennon. <laughs> George who? Harrison. Oh, George, George Martin. Martin. George Martin. Okay. George Martin. George Martin produced it, and the reason he produced it is because his daughter was a big Ultravox fan. Really? Ah. Nepotism. Now, do you, That's right. Do you notice a difference uh, when he produced the, an album of theirs versus before? No. Yeah. I mean, th- so really I think this is anything? one of the better songs they have. I think a lot of their other songs are kind of schmaltzy, but I think... George Martin, uh, and I'll defer to Drew on all things Beatles, but was kind of an innovator in terms oh, of yeah. sound yeah. and orchestration. And this this doesn't feel to me to be in a very elaborate or uh, uniquely um, uh, structured piece of music. So he was just doing it to give some uh, cool credit for his daughter. Yeah, I think she's <laughs> probably like, um, you know, still mad at him for introducing Yoko to John. <laughs> Why? He did fine. So... Uh, 
and of course, if it hadn't been for that, we wouldn't have had all that great art and music. So, uh, wow, so there's so Ultravox, sweet. folks. We love to get your suggestions for Room 7609. You can write to us at mlsoulofdetroit at gmail.com. You can call us at 313-288-9070. That's 313-Butterfield-8970. Someday we're going to fully exploit that. Give us something to work with, folks. Give us a call. I promise you we will get your voice. Mm-hmm. on the air and there's uh, lots of other ways you can reach out to us you can have a message read on the air a message that you've authored by participating in our cami soul program that's where you make a donation of twenty dollars or more and in the notes section of the paypal um uh page you can tell us what you would like us to read on the air you can also Maybe just someone can write my uh, my piece for i think you're life. doing just fine, Matt, but I will say I would not go back to your school in the fall. <laughs> I just don't think it's safe. With you running over people looking to refinance things with brown paper packages full of meat in their hands. Um, so, uh, so yeah, look both ways before you cross the street, folks. Wear a ma- uh, mask, wear a condom, manscape, all those good things. Um, or there's another way to give us money where there's something in it for you. There's this little thing we have called merchandise. Mark, where do people get the greatest swag in the free world? Drew and, wait, free swag, did you say? No, greatest swag in oh, the I free thought, world. Oh, okay. That makes yeah, a little more sense. The world is free. We charge a hefty premium. <laughs> Drewandmikestore.com. And we have a discount on our hockey jerseys. Uh, we we'll do. put up a picture of the very attractive white hockey jersey in action since we got back on the ice last week. Uh, the jersey is very attractive. The model is not. Um, and we have all kinds of other cool stuff. Our hats, signed Kwame Sutras, T-shirts, stickers. You can find it all there. They make great gifts even for people you don't like. And uh, we appreciate the support since this show's inception uh, more than a year ago of a Zot, which you can, if you're looking for a car, you're looking to get your car fixed, go to dealsinthed.com. That's where I got my C-Max fixed and it's still on the road. So that's pretty good. And if you want to do a little socially distanced fun and get on a pedal pub in Detroit, I saw a pedal pub the other day where everybody's sitting next to each other. Not smart, not good. And also not michiganpeddler.com. Michigan Peddler is thinking safety first. So if you want to have a socially distanced good time, it's Michigan Peddler, P-E-D-A-L-E-R.com. And we appreciate it when you support the other shows in the Red Shovel Network. That's Charlie LaDuff's No BS News Hour, Eli Denny and Bob with No Filter Sports, and the man who made it all possible, Drew Lane with the Drew and Mike podcast, which relies on Mark Fellhauer, who makes all that possible too. So Mark, thank you for your many efforts on behalf of our free world. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not free though. You know that. No, no. And if you want a free willy, you might want to manscape first. <laughs> Use promo code uh, <laughs> ML to get a 20% discount. That's at, uh, that's at what? Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. Yeah. When you check yeah. out, just put it in there. Thanks for listening, folks. We will be back next week. Please rate, subscribe, and like. And if you donate, we want to thank some of our donors. Um, special thanks go to Keith, who donated to us um, uh, this month. And uh, I, I got to find this before we go. We, we, uh, we're looking for some more feedback. Um, we appreciate your ratings. And when you rate us, you usually get a chance to say something. But, but we, no uh, <laughs> Where's this one going? Here's, here's the latest uh, rating. Um, it's a one-star rating from, um, from uh, a fella here. S.G. Turner Sr. says, Typical ultra-left-wing BS with a Detroit spin. <laughs> Don't bother. So uh, Okay, that's nice. Yeah. I think S.G. stands for stupid guy. So take that! <laughs> that was even worse. Maybe it's time to go. <laughs> Cyrus! <laughs> Save us from ourselves. Get us Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? And now M.L. Elric has prepared a statement. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. Uh, been a while since I was in front of you. I figure I'll stick to the cards this time. <laughs> <clears throat> There's been speculation that I was involved in the events that occurred the freeway and the rooftop. I'm sorry, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit that conveniently appeared despite the fact that... I know that it's confusing. It is one thing 
to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. I never said you're a superhero. Didn't? Mm -mm. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and uh, fantastic. I, I, I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly, with this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made, largely public. The truth is, I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs>